But what I'm going to speak on is what God was impressing on my heart. And in that is rest. That's what I'm going to speak on today. Rest. The average person of the day don't know how to rest. Father, I thank you for the opportunity I have, Lord, to speak today. But God, let me empty myself today out of great precious love. And Lord, you speak through me. Father, as a vessel, Lord, you in your hand. And Lord, let us hear the word today, Lord, and let us mix it, Lord, as the word's going to tell us about the day with faith. But the word, Lord, be used in our life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the 37th Psalm, verse 1, it begins. It says, Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Now the Bible says here, the open death this. He said to the righteous, he said, Fret not. Let not your spirit become hot or a boiling because of the evil doers and the things that are around you. He said, Be at peace and continue as you are. And let not the things that are going on around you affect your life or bother you. Now we look at the world and we look at the things that happen and we look at situations and if we're not careful, we let ourselves begin to fret. And that means simply in your mind to become hot or grieve or tough or at a boiling point or at a temperature beyond a stable degree. God says, don't let yourself do that. He said, in me, I am your rest. And this is what God is speaking to us today. We as individuals, how many of you have ever struck a night that you don't sleep well? And when you are not sleeping well, you're first here and you're first there, you're tossing and you're turning. Sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down and you're over and over. Now God is speaking to you and I and what God is saying here in this 37th chapter is to come to the place to where we walk as the righteous in the rest of the Lord, to where the world as it passes by us on the outside, don't detour or change us. How would you have liked to walk into the course of the king of Nero in the day of Nero's time and have been a Christian in that day? But the Christian in that day was persecuted by Nero to the maximum extreme. He many times would put them on crosses that would be angler. Then he would pour oil upon their body and oil around them. And he would wipe the oil. And then he would get in his chariot. And he would ride between them as they, and they circled them. Now the righteous stood that in that day. But to do so, they could not do it without being able to rest in the Lord Jesus Christ and know of a surety that God was God. If they only had an inkling, if their mind only comprehended to a degree that God was really there, or if they had not taken the word of God that was given and mixed it with what God tells us to do, they would have not have been able to stand and do as they did in those days. And God is telling us, we live in a society that's not persecuted the world more than degrees, but God expects the same. He expects the same wrath, and He expects the same faith, and He expects the same trust in you and I today in our time. He said, fret not. He said, around you will be all the evil things. He said, fret not. Don't let the demon worship. Don't let the tree worshipers. Don't let the economies. Don't let the circumstances in your situation fret you. He said for in verse 2, he said, For they shall soon be cut down. God said they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herd. It will only be for a moment and a period of time. And in time it will be so short that man won't even understand. Man will not be able to comprehend. I heard a man say one time something that brought to my remembrance today. It is hard to grasp. He said we, as men, try to look at God and understand God. And the man said, bring to me a worm. And they brought him an earthworm and they laid it in his hand. And as that worm was laying in his head, he said, now, 
He said, you speak the word and have that word tell me how much he understands of man. And he said, I'll tell you how much man understands of God if the word speaks. We have to take God by faith. We look at the awesomeness of God and realize in the hand we are but like the worm in understanding. But when we put our faith and our trust in God, then the awesome God works and uses and works through us as we are and as we stand. God said here, <clears throat> excuse me, that they will be cut down. They'll wither as the grass. The situations will soon be gone. But the situation lasts for years. God said years to him. Remember as I preached on it? I ask nothing. What God is speaking about. He is speaking to you in eyes soul. I mean, let him realize that God speaks to your soul, the inward part of you. The inward part of man. He said, trust in the Lord. Verse 3. And do good. Trust in the Lord. Now when you put trust in something, you put, he is speaking to put the trust in how much of an attitude? All the way. He should put trust in the Lord. Now when we put trust in God, that means our hand has to be what? Removed. If we need our hand in the circumstance, then God saying we are trusting in ourselves, not God. And he said here, listen as we go on, it says, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. If we was to go to the sixth chapter of Matthew and read it, we'd find he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. 633 Matthew. What he was saying here was exactly the same words. You put all your faith and all your trust in God, and he will feed you. You have to trust in him. He said, Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. When you as an individual, begin to do what God tells you to, then the desires of your heart, if you are seeking God, shall be fulfilled. But if you do not put God in this realm and place, you are not opening the door for God to be able to do in your life what he has promised to do for you as an individual. <coughs> it will be held. It will be held to you. To do it. And this is what God is saying. Commit thy ways unto the Lord and trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Did you hear what it was saying? When you commit it into his hands, and you are following the format we were just talking about, and you trust in him that God's word will what? It will come to pass. Of a surety. Of a surety. People sometimes come and they say, Oh, but in God's word didn't work. You left something out where God's word had, will have worked. We're going to read a little bit later why God says His word doesn't work in your life. It says that where we read, and in verse 6, and it says, And he shall bring forth righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. It will be surety. Verse 7 is where I want to preach to you a little bit on today. And in Hebrews, it says, verse 7, Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently 
for him. Fret not thyself because of him whosoever oppresses in the way, because of the man who bringeth wickedness devices to pass. He said, Rest in the Lord. I look at the children of God. They say, We are resting, and we are like that child of my grandson. You tell him to go to bed. He'll put his feet upon the walls of the bed. He begins to rattle the cage. He shakes and he wiggles and he rolls. We are like this with God. We are sitting down. We say, yes, God, we're resting. But you're first this way. And then you're that. You're up. You're down. You're on your back. You're going to replace with what God tells you to do. If you are resting in God, you're not that way. You're trusting in the Lord Almighty. You are not fretful. God said, fret not. Be not wobbly around. But you take God's word and you stand firm and true in it. And because you do not stand firm and true in it is why the ups and downs in your life. Because you are ready. Because you are not resting in the God Almighty. And God said you have got to rest in Him if you want to see His word fulfilled in you. God said, rest, fret not. But you look at me, and as we talk, it's so easy to do just exactly what God says not. I'm talking to me is what I'm talking to you. We can look at circumstances, we can look at situations, we can look and then we begin to fret. We begin to devise devices. We begin to do the very thing God said, take your hand out. He said, trust in me. And I will do these things. He said, you rest in me. And I will feed thee. That is God's promise. As God was speaking that to me, I was saying, yes, God, I understand what you're saying. Now, God, in me, I will begin to place my rest and my trust. And then when the circumstances arise, as I find myself to be, like my grandson I was talking about, I'm fidgety. I don't want to rest. I'm refusing what God said. And I'm laying and I'm rolling and I'm turning and God said, if we want to see God come through, we've got to come to the place to where we simply rest and wait on the Lord. Rest. Rest means just exactly what Jesus did. He crawled in the bow of the boat. The disciples were running to and fro in a state of panic. And he laid his head down in the boot. Because God had said, Rest in me. And he knew that God would come through. And Jesus is speaking to you and I to put our rest and our trust in the Lord Almighty, just as Jesus did in the Bible when the storm was raging. He's been telling you and I to put our head in the hand of the Lord and to give the rest. But our society that we live in today pushes and shoves to keep things going. Everything is free. We don't have time to rest. But God says you don't have time not to rest. You don't have time not to rest. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4. We'll look at what God says on the rest of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 4, God was speaking. 
Hebrews 4 1 says, Let us therefore. It says, Let us therefore fear. Did you listen to the word? Fear. It said, Let us therefore fear. Lest a promise being with us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. God would say that there's a way and a possibility to come short of the rest of God in the place where you trust in Him. Are you falling short of what God is saying? And this is what God is warning you to us. He is warning you and I lest we should come short of the rest that he is freaking about. What we fret not, what we look not, but we trust in him completely and we rest <coughs> in the hand of the Lord. He listen to me. It's easy to let the circumstances around us cause us to fret. It's easy to let the things in our lives cause us to become heated. So God's just saying, no, don't let it. He's just saying here, did you listen to what it's saying? He said, are you falling short? He said, if you are, quit falling short of the rest of God. He said in verse 2, he said, For unto us was the gospel preached. Listen to me. I bring to you the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am preaching to you what God is saying today. And that's what he's saying right here. He said here, he said, For unto us was the gospel preached. You have heard of the gospel. It says, As well as unto them. As well as unto them. <laughs> he was writing and saying the gospel was preached unto Abraham. The gospel was preached unto Israel. But this is what he was going on to say. You're listening to what he's saying. He said it was preached to them. But he went on to say, He said it was preached to them as well as unto them. But, um, but the word preached did not profit. Are you listening? How many times have you heard the word of God <laughs> and have not seen the prophet of the word in your life? Are you hearing me today? How many times has the word been opened and you hear the valuableness of the word and you know and you hear it? And it does not bring profit. It has not brought change in your life as it should. Listen to what God's saying here. He said you're missing the rest of the Lord, the rest and the peace that God is proclaiming that is ours. He said, listen, he said the word was preached. Did not profit them. It did not profit them. <laughs> and he went on to say, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. In other words, God said, when you hear the word of Jesus Christ, when you hear what is being spoken today, and he was speaking about the rest, he said, if it is not mixed, with faith, and faith is trust in God, that trust in God that we cannot see, but simply trusting Him to complete that which He has began in our life. We've got to rest in the Lord Jesus Christ and leave it to Him, not be turning to and fro, not be fretful, not wallowing or up and down, but standing firm and knowing that God will come through. You listen to what it said. It said here, not being profitable unto them, not mixed with faith. And this was a reference to in our Bible, to your very working being of your stomach. The Bible said this, he said, as 
as you open your mouth and you consume food and it goes down into your stomach. Your food that goes into your stomach, if your body will not excrete from your liver and your pancreas and the other things inside your being and mix it with the food and consume the food and put the nutrients of the food into your body, you won't have to you. You would eat one time. <coughs> And then you would die. Because to even be excreted from your body, fluids have to be ingested into your stomach. You would bloat and you would die. God saying right there, He said, You can bloat on the Word of God. And the word, very word of God that will bring you life if you don't mix it with faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and then rest upon Him. To mix it, to bring life with it, it will bring you down. God is speaking to us. When you are real tired, there is nothing that feels better to this old being I'm talking about myself than to put my head on the pillow and to be able to lay back in the bed and let my muscles just simply relax. That's what God is saying. God is saying here, He's not saying cease from all your work for Him, just the opposite. He's saying rest in God. Rest in the Lord. Put all your faith and trust in Him and lay back and rest in Him and then continue with this life as God proclaims for you to do. But you know how easy that is to say? Easy. You know how easy that is to do? It's not as easy. That's why I'm preaching to you the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ today. He's telling you to mix with the word of God. What? Are you listening? Are you listening to me today? Mix with the word of God. Hey! Mix with them what will bring them forth into life and enable you to do the very thing that God has proclaimed in His Word could be done. Why, it's easy to sit and listen to the Word, but when God calls us to mix it with faith, It's not as easy. It's not as easy to do when God called it. But then the Bible said these words. He said, the just shall walk by faith. He said, the just shall walk by faith. So what is it saying as we're reading God's word and he donated so much to the rest of the Lord. He donated many passages of scriptures in the Bible telling us to rest in the Lord. The next time you're fretful, the next time worries overtake you, the next time circumstances begin to press and I walk over to you and I put my arm around my brother and my sister and I say, let us rest in the Lord. We understand what I'm saying. I'm saying, God, let us mix faith with the Word of God. And let us mix it so that the ingredients and the nutrients in the Word of God will flow from the inside of us and strength will come to our being to where we can do exactly. 
exactly what the Word of God has proclaimed in this hour that we are living in. No other time on the face of earth except two times is it more important today to do what God said. It's always been important. But listen, the Bible says, As in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And in the days of Noah, there was a preacher who preached. You turn your Bible and see, he preached a hundred years. He preached one hundred years and never seen a soul saved. But he nonetheless preached every day soundly, never back down, trusting in God. The Bible says in nine places in three and two chapters in the Bible, and it says Noah did everything that God told him to do. He put faith in God and did it as God said. Never back down. Never seeing the rain coming. Never seeing the circumstances change. Never seeing what he thought he probably should have saw. But he simply trusted in God. He rested in the Lord. Continued with his labor, but his rest was not in himself. His rest was in the Almighty. He knew that God had spoken, and he knew if God had spoken, it was going to be. And if God had spoken today, it is still going to be. But it still left you and I to put our rest in the Lord. The rest in the Lord. That's why that song that Peggy was talking about was stirring in my soul so much this week. And I know if you'd come by this week and talk to me, you would have heard part of that song. I don't care who you was or what was going on because God was speaking to me on the word rest. Why oh, so downcast? Oh, my soul. Couldn't drive it out of my mind. Why is so downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God. Psalm 42. Why? He was asking himself. He was asking himself, why did I let this bring me below resting in God? That was why he was saved. Why have I done it? I know we are society and we are that way. We want everything to happen quickly, no matter what it be. But listen to me. You will find that when you begin to put your rest in God, remember I read you in the Psalms, what did he say? It will come to pass. But it may not come to pass as quickly as we like it. And because of our society we live in, we like things to happen quickly. Yes, when I'm praying for people's souls, I'd like for it to happen quickly. But I've also learned how to put it in the hand of God and say, God, I'll rest in you, but I'm not going to cease my labor, but I'm resting in you, and I will see it, God. Are you listening to what God said? What happens to us and why we don't become as effective for the Lord as we should be? Are you listening? It's because we're not resting in the Lord. We have our hand and our finger in too many things. We have our hand and our finger, but not careful, even into the witnessing that we do to others. And God say what? Rest in me and only speak what I tell you to speak. Are you listening? God wants us to rest in Him to the point that we are like Jesus Christ. They asked Jesus Christ, and Jesus said, The only thing I say and the only thing I do is what I see my Father say and what I see my Father doing. And Jesus left this world and he said, I, when I left, he said, I give you the mind of Christ. I give you the ability. But we got to put our rest in our trust in Jesus and grow not weary and well doing, but continue. The next time that the toils 
and the troubles of this life begin to set in. I want you to remember what Jesus was saying. I want you to remember to rest in Him. I don't know how, other than what God gives me, to instill them words in your head. If that would work, I'd be over here with a hammer going. But it don't work that way. But if I can get them instilled in your head through the power of the Holy Spirit, that the instant something arises in your life, you remember them words then God can come on the scene and He can begin to give to you rest. God knows. God knows. I have a daughter sitting back there that sometimes is the most practical kid I've ever met. Do you get fidgeting and worried over everything. Now I'm just using her as an example. If Dad could change it, you want to do? <coughs> He'd change it. <coughs> but God said we are to put our life into His hand and rest therein. Rest therein. And then our life will become at peace. And then when I read in Matthew, I read a scripture that really blesses my soul. You know what it said? It says, when I come to that place that I can honestly do that, it says, then God will be even put my enemy at peace with me. Did you know that? That I even put my enemy at peace with me. But until I can come to the place that I'm totally resting in God, God can't do that. He's that with it. And that's what God is saying to me today, to speak to you and to me. Come to the place. You can read the rest of that where he went on to give a description how the children of Israel had the gospel preached to them. Even though it was preached, they didn't mix it with faith, so that it didn't them no good. They didn't find the rest in the Lord. They were still the children of the Lord, but they were still freckled. They were still scurrying to and fro. They were still struggling. They were still having the troubles. It never was working like it should, because they hadn't come to the place that they rested in the oil night. And we have to come to the place where we can rest and quiet in the oil night.